So what is a random process? Well, it's a collection of time functions with associated probability description. But what does that mean? Well, let's look at an example to help us with this. And we're going to consider the example of a mobile telephone call uh, where we're looking at the amplitude of the signal during the call. And here is one potential measurement, a, what we call a sample function. So here we go, sample function. Uh, and this is over time. And this might be the amplitude as we move around and all the multipaths bounce off the different buildings and so on. And the level of the signal goes up and down in this random way. So this is maybe a sample function. We need a collection of time functions. The important thing is this is in time, and this is going up and down in a random way. And what does that really mean? Well, that's what we're getting to when we talk about a random process. Well, let's consider another sample function, uh, another possible one from a second telephone call, for example. And maybe the phone call on this occasion causes the amplitude to go up and down in this way. So here's another sample function. Uh, and this might be sample function one, this is sample function two, and of course for every telephone call we make we'll get lots of sample functions. Uh, so our random process looks at these sample functions and tries to characterize them in terms of random variables. So for example, let's look at a particular time instance. So let's look at one second for example. So this is one second, let's say. Okay, so what is this associated probability description? Well, for a, for a mobile phone call, uh, we know that the amplitude of the signal has a Rayleigh distribution. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean, in, especially in comparison, uh, in relation to a random process? Well, what it means is, let's look at time, second, time of one second. That value is a random variable. It's the random variable x1. So that the height of these are x, the random process is the random process x, let's just label it as the random process x, and at time 1 it is random and it's specified by a random variable x1. And random variable x1 has a probability density function and that probability density function for mobile communications is a Rayleigh distribution. Uh, we've got videos on Rayleigh distribution on the channel if you'd like more information about that. The important thing for here though, in terms of random processes, is at a particular time, and we've picked one second, but we could pick any, one second, the, the value is random, which means in each of the different sample functions, it takes a different value. And the distribution of those values, because that's a random variable at x1, the random, it's the, the random variable at time one, uh, it has a distribution that's a, that's a Rayleigh. Let's look at another time, let's just pick two seconds for example, could pick anything, but at this time here, this gives us another random variable. It's a different random variable, this is x at two. So they come from the same random process, but at a different time, they are a different random variable. So random process is actually a lot of random variables next to each other in time. And so random variable x2, which is the random variable at time 2, has a probability density function. It is also a, uh, for mobile communications, it is also a Rayleigh distribution. Uh, nothing has changed really between time one and time two, except you've moved to a different location with your mobile phone, and so the amplitude has gone up and down. But statistically, you are still in the same statistical environment. So the PDF at time one, in this case, is the same as the PDF at time two. And this is because uh, we're assuming we don't move too far in, within one second. And therefore, this is what we call a stationary random process. So here's the random process. The random process is a collection of random variables in time. That's the important difference from a random variable. It's a stack of random variables in time. Okay, at each time, there is a random variable with a PDF, and that's the associated probability description. Okay, so if, uh, what, and we just got to the idea of stationary, 
And stationary is when the marginal and joint, uh, but I'm just showing the, the marginal PDFs here, when they don't depend on the choice of the time origin, which means they're the same regardless of time. So if this PDF at time one is the same as this PDF at time two, then this implies stationary. And of course, if it's if the same for all time. Okay, so in this direction, we are getting our PDFs and you can see, I think, different value here, different value here, different value here. They're all random for different sample functions for different telephone calls. Uh, and then at time two, we have different values for the different PDF. If these PDFs are all the same, it's stationary. Uh, one other, one last concept to know about is called ergodicity. And in this case, we look in this direction. Okay, so here we've looked down here. Let's now look for each sample function. So if we looked at this sample function and plotted the histogram in this direction, so instead of going down all the different sample functions, getting the PDF, instead we take just sample function one and plot its histogram. If its histogram looks like this, then, because I'm just taking every single value from this sample function and I'm plotting its uh, the number of the percentage time it happens on the vertical here. So this is the this here is the percentage time it happens, and this is the value, which is the vertical value. Uh, so you can see that this, if I divide by the length of time, this is flipped over uh, 90 degrees, is the PDF. Okay, if the system is ergodic. So let's, let's take that back a few steps. So let's do it for this one and let's say it looks like this. Let's do it for this sample function and we'll get a histogram for this sample function of all the different values here and how often they happen. Uh, and then if in this direction here, so here we had stationary was across this direction. So if all the different times have the same PDFs, it's stationary. And now if all the different sample functions have the same PDF as each other and the same as the actual PDF, then, so if each of these histograms, the, the sample function histograms have the same PDF as each other and the same as the random variable stationary PDFs, then it is ergodic. So we're, I'll write here same, uh, same and same, maybe I'll just say that, so the same as each other, so the same for each sample function and the same as the PDF, then it is what we call ergodic. C-E-R-G-O-D-I-C. So this is an ergodic random process if it is stationary and if every single sample function has the same, uh, uh, the same behavior as the ensemble. So we call this the ensemble PDF, and this is a sample function histogram, the sample function behavior. So if this has helped you to understand a bit more about random processes and random variables, please give the video a like, a uh, thumbs up, it helps others to find the video, uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos, and check out the website in the link below for a full categorized list of videos on the channel.